Are drugs the answer? Will they turn you on or will they turn on you? Were you taking drug or was anyone taking drugs in the junior high? Like six, eight years ago? Well that's changed, it's true. Most Lee, at first it was a college kind of thing. And then in the last, oh, four, three years, we've been seeing most drug use in high schools, and now it's getting down to junior high school level. The same way I hear college students now saying, my gosh, you know, my little brothers and sisters are way ahead of where we were. It's, it's almost like the younger and younger people are becoming more and more aware. On the other hand, some of the really young kids are popping anything. They, you give them a pill, they'll drop it. I mean, almost insane. His name is Dr. Alan Cohen. He is a psychologist. But what's more important, he knows about drugs firsthand because he was one of Timothy Leary's original disciples. He lived the psychedelic life for about three years before he decided drugs are not the answer. Drugs, he decided, did not promote peace, love, and human understanding. Now he often discusses the whole drug scene with groups of junior and senior high school students. This is one of those discussions. Uh, I'm speaking kind of from a funny position as a psychologist. And instructed by Timothy Leary and others, we took some field trips that year, which were a lot different than any trips we'd taken before. Uh, so I stayed with the scene for about three years, took lots of drugs, sampled this and that, thought it was a good thing for a while, and then later kind of saw through it, I think. Now, you know, a lot of adults are very upset about the whole drug thing. Uh, and they don't understand why kids are turning on. If they just look at, say, TV for a while, at the media, they're getting this message over and over again. Something wrong with you? Turn on. Headache, perhaps? Don't worry, thousands of things. Too much acid in your stomach? No problem. Constipated? Don't worry, right? God forbid you should get nervous, even. We have things for that. All over the counter. And if you're really uptight, uh, you can probably get a prescription for something. And the thing is, I don't think adults realize that uh, not all kids who experiment with, with some kind of dope are fiends, degenerates, you know, immediate criminals, weirdos. They're not my kids who could possibly be experimenting. And you hear things like mothers on the phone saying, I've just found out that my kid's using marijuana. Quickly, the tranquilizer, you know. Uh, so there's this hypocrisy around. People, in my experience, use drugs to feel better. There's a lot of other motives going on for kicks or uh, out of rebellion, sure. Curiosity, yeah. Social pressure, there's that. Seeking insight, uh-huh. For no reason at all, yeah. But underneath it, when people get high, it means that they're not feeling so high ordinarily. The question is, is the kind of high that you can get with the kind of drugs that are being used now worth it? Now, I want to talk a little bit about three main categories of drugs. Uh, speed, uh, the strong psychedelics, and good old marijuana. Right? All of which are fairly controversial now. Speed, not so much. Speed, stimulants to the nervous system. Uh, they're taken by... Uh, dropping them by capsules or pills, and occasionally people shoot it with a needle. Very powerful stuff. What it does is excite your nervous system, can get you into a state of euphoria and a lot of energy for a while, but it also takes a great toll on your brain, if you use it long enough, on your liver, and especially on your head. Uh, over a long period of time, you lose your appetite. You don't sleep so much. You begin to get paranoid. That means very suspicious and distrustful. Uh, so that actually, in the long run, things like, like speed, much more dangerous than heroin. Because the body builds up a tolerance, and you have to take more and more to get the same effect. And the higher you go, the harder you crash, the harder you come down. And it's this period of depression and feeling of great uh, loginess that is so bad with speed, because you've got to turn on again and again. They say speed kills. Now, the hip culture is beginning to learn this. And it isn't so hip anymore to use speed. Now, with psychedelics, more controversial, yes? LSD, DMT, psilocybin, mescaline, peyote. They come up with a new name of their PCT, MDA. Now, another year, there'll be all kinds of names. They do something strange. They do 
something to your consciousness which isn't done by the hard narcotics which put you dead asleep, the barbiturates which also turns you off, uh, the stimulants, it changes mood and consciousness, alters it. It's awfully unpredictable. And sooner or later, at least in my experience, and I know a lot of people, sooner or later, if you don't stop in time, you flip out permanently. You blow your mind. You don't know when, but sooner or later it happens. Now, they begin to found some things about the psychedelics, about their effects on chromosomes. We don't know all about that yet, but there seems to be an effect on all these drugs on either the genetic material in your chromosomes or some kinds of factors which can influence perhaps unborn children. There's no question that uh, if you have a pregnant rat at home, you should keep her away from LSD. So there's obviously caution on the physical level. Now you get around to uh, pot, marijuana. That's really controversial. On the one hand, you have people saying, ah, I know what it is, it's that dopey narcotic. Anybody who takes that should be put in jail forever. They're just deviants. Uh, on the other hand, you've got people saying, man, grass is really groovy. I mean, uh, not only should it be legalized, but it uh, should turn on everybody, little kids, make a better world. And they're going back and forth. And these people don't talk to each other. And the laws turn out to be very severe, perhaps unfair. And perhaps a, a legal approach to using drugs is not as good as a public health approach. I'm not talking about sale or manufacture. In terms of my own experience, I think the most important thing was that they finally found the active ingredient. You say you didn't think it had an active ingredient. Well, if anison can or some other kind of aspirin, why not? Why not pot? It's a drug called Delta-9 trans-tetrahydrocannabinol. Right? I get away with calling it THC. And it turns out to be a psychedelic drug, not a narcotic, not a stimulant, not a depressant, a psychedelic. The question is, does it accumulate? Do all the physical effects add up? If you've had 10 joints a week, is that 10 joints worth of THC or eight or five? We don't know a lot of these things. But there's no reason, certainly, to think that the grass is harmless. I mean, there are a lot of things. I worked for two years at the counseling center at Berkeley. Saw a lot of kids uh, using pot. And I didn't see any side effects, but then I didn't look for them. After I found out about the research, I went back and saw that a lot of the things I would have suspected from long-term use of LSD in small doses occurred also with grass. Uh, some of them, a decrease in memory, concentration ability, increased passivity or feeling like doing nothing, creeping paranoia, difficulty of translating thought into words, uh, getting hung up with other people, distrusting, uh, and denying that drugs could ever be harmful. And the thing is with grass, it's so subtle, so dangerous, because you never look for the side effect. It's sneaky. It's a sneaky drug. All the psychedelics are sneaky. So there's a question of, of watching out to see if you're getting too far. All these drugs make you dependent. They make you a slave. Freedom is inside. You go up, you come down. You never get to keep what you have. It's like being asleep and experiencing that you're waking up. Yes? Uh, could there be some kind of a physical addictment to marijuana? Well. There doesn't seem to be a physical addiction to, to pot in the sense that the body craves it, has to have it to get straight. Like, for example, is true with heroin, the narcotics, with strong barbiturate use or even strong methadrine use. Now, whether it's habit forming is a tricky issue. It probably is, although the pothead will tell you, I can stop anytime I want. I just don't want to. I remember a kid coming up to me and getting very angry and saying, look, I know that pot's not habit forming, and I should know I'm an expert. I've turned on every day for three years. <laughs> it's a tricky issue. It's easier to give up smoking pot than for most adults to give up smoking cigarettes, but you can get dependent on it, I think. Does it change the user's personality? Does pot change the user's personality? It can. Again, it varies. Uh, if you smoke one cigarette a year, you don't look for smashing personality changes although people have flipped out on one marijuana trip if they're very sensitive. Gradually, if you, you use a lot, there is kind of a, 
a change of disintegration in personality. People aren't as interested. They get more egoistic. Uh, they feel that they know it all. They're not likely to, to be very tolerant towards people who don't turn on. Uh, they go into a kind of a fantasy thing sometimes. And they don't feel that they can act on the world effectively. Yes, sometimes there is a change. Again, though, it, it does vary with dosage and use and who you are. How can you reach a person who just doesn't want to listen? Well, you have to try. You have to communicate. And you also have to try to figure out, if you're concerned about them, is why they're turning on in the first place. What is it that makes it so difficult for them to listen? You know, are they missing somebody that's to be close to them? Are, are they missing friends? In other words, try to find out what it is, and then try to work on that. Sometimes you just have to be very patient and very honest, and just lay it on the line, and point out the kinds of things that might be happening, changes that you might see. Now, it sinks in sooner or later. I mean, underneath, everybody who's turning on everything knows that it's a bad scene on some level. I used to rationalize like crazy. I used to make all kinds of excuses. But you know, basically, your intuition knows that it, it's not going to work for you. And that's on your side if you're trying to communicate to somebody about the use of drugs. Yes? Um, do you think that the use of drugs nowadays is more or less bad, or do you think it's really a change in the way people are thinking? Well, I can't help but think it's, it's a change. Because, you know, all these drugs were around before. There were fads in, in all of these kinds of materials. It seems to me that the level of awareness of teenagers is so high today. The level of dissatisfaction is ho so high. And the need to try to do some changing in terms of oneself or in society. So uh, I think that, you see, drugs are not the problem. Life is the problem. If you solve the problem of life, you don't have to worry about taking drugs. And it seems to me that we're, we're at a critical time, and people are searching for meaningful answers. We've taught them that drugs are one way, but it turns out not to be. Yes? Do you feel that the, the marijuana should be legalized? Well, the legalization problem is very difficult. Uh, clearly, from what we know about the active ingredient in pot, it would be insane to legalize it in the sense of, oh, go to your five and dime store and pick up some pot, because there's a very p powerful chemical in it. On the other hand, I think we should be thinking about dealing with drug use in the same way that we deal with alcoholism as a health problem. I'm not in favor, I don't see it doing any good for young kids to go to jail just because they've been experimenting with a drug. I feel strongly that people who are pushing it and dealing it and manufacturing it and making money from it should be for their own sakes uh, criminally prosecuted. So I hope that we get to the position where possessing drugs is not necessarily enough to get you put away for life, but where people realize that perhaps maybe they don't want to go that road. I think that's where we're going to have to go. Education. I'm sorry. Well, I know a lot of kids who do take drugs figure that it's their own life, their are harming. What do you feel about, what do you think about this? Well, that, that old point that, you know, what do you care about what I do to my life as long as I don't hurt you? Well, people can argue back that people who get strung out on drugs and are stoned all the time don't help society much. If they happen to be dumb enough to be stoned while they're driving a car, there could be a problem. But again, the question to the person is not whether or not society has a right to determine whether or not they should use drugs, but really what's happening to them. Suicide is a bad trip. It also turns out to be against the law, for whatever that, that means. And to me, the critical issue with one's friends is pointing out to them Again, sure, you have the right to do anything to yourself and destroy yourself, but wouldn't it be groovier not to? Wouldn't it be groovier to make it the place where you're happy? Um, why do so many kids say that, um, that pot and LSD is less harmful than alcohol, or pot mostly, is less harmful than alcohol if, you know, so many doctors are saying that it really is more dangerous? It's like comparing apples to pears. That's the problem. The drugs do different things. Alcohol is a depressant. And it knocks you out. It's a turn-off drug. And pot and LSD do something else to consciousness. Now, obviously, if you uh, guzzle a, a quart of gin every day, like, <laughs> can compare that with smoking some low-grade Nebraska pot once a year, you've got a good point that alcohol is more, more dangerous. On the other hand, if you're turning on a lot of hashish or maybe even taking LSD 
once, it could be a lot more dangerous than, than having a, a couple of, of cocktails or a little bit of wine. Again, abuse of any drug doesn't make sense. Yes, sir? Uh, where do these drugs come from and are they pure? The very interesting question. Uh, most of the drugs on the market uh, are not manufactured by drug companies. They're made, uh, most of the marijuana comes from out of the country. Uh, one of the, the same with the LSD is manufactured in labs. One of the big problems for any of the drug users is that the stuff is so, so terribly impure, uh, particularly the psychedelics. The black market has very low quality control. It's much more difficult to make it pure than you think. And also, most important thing, they don't care how impure they make it because you can't tell the difference. A hallucination on fake acid, sometimes they put belladonna, throw in a little uh, speed or mescaline, and then throw in some strychnine, which is a deadly poison. You can get high off of that too. You can drop dead also, but you won't be able to tell the difference. And you can't go back to your dealer and complain because he's going to say, well, a trip depends on what you're thinking, the set and setting. So that's why they can be so uh, uh, terribly careless about it, because you're not going to be able to tell the difference, and it is a big problem. Let's see. Uh, yes, you said there was no way to tell if a psychedelic was pure, but how about marijuana? Well, that's a funny question. I remember once turning on a very old pothead in terms of his experience, and I told him it was the best grass he'd ever get straight from Central America. He was so stoned after one puff, he was wobbling around. He, he started hallucinating. I was roaring hysterically because he was smoking uh, tea, you know, like from the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> a lot of it is psychological, so that it can be, marijuana can be cut with almost anything, and if you think you're getting high, you usually are. Yes? I'd like to know what made you change your mind from taking drugs. Then how did I quit? Well, I found out that, that, in fact, the drugs didn't work. I was lucky, because I got out before at least the final thing blew in my mind. I'm a survivor. I'm an exception. I'm able to sit here and talk to you about it. Uh, I saw they didn't work, that we were being hypocritical, and uh, I never felt guilty about using drugs, and I don't think kids should. Who cares what you've done in the past? The question is what you're doing today. And it's no reason to continue using drugs just because if you stop, then you have to say you made a mistake. That's silly. Uh, some people have said today is the beginning of the rest of your life, and that's where the decision should be made. Don't feel regretful over what you've done, but start making clear decisions about what you're going to do in the future. Yours. You can change the world, or you can cop out with drugs. If you're thinking about drugs, think about this. What do you do when the music stops? Where are you then? Where are you then? When you drop full blown on all the mountain tops. Where are you then, my friend? What do you see when your pupils contract? And you're out in the alley at the Orac, and you're not quite whole, and the straight world's intact. Where are you then, my friend? You can choose to change the world, but for that, you need your head straight and in the right place. If you choose drugs instead, where are we then, my friend?